Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. It is that time once more where, like a moth drawn to that sweet flame, I find myself having to show you guys yet another really interesting, fun set of figures from the Dragon Trapper's Lodge. So, I have been slowly and steadily working my way through the Chosen of the Kami, which are their samurai eastern asian themed army which we'll talk about a little bit more today um of the various types of units they've put out for wargaming and skirmishing purposes but when i saw this set the critter folk of blue woods barrows um something was unlocked in those core childhood memories and like a lot of you of a certain age and of a certain inclination in types of literature that you may have enjoyed when you were younger or still today, I found myself quite entranced with the Red Wall books when I was just a young High Lord Tamburlaine. And I can remember my dad actually sitting down, I was probably in maybe third grade at the time, and reading those to me and my brother uh, right before bedtime, which was always a treat. We had some interesting books read to us as children. Uh, <laughs> that's a whole other subject for a whole other video. But yeah, uh, a lot of fond memories of those. But when I saw this, like I said, one of those core childhood memories were unlocked. And I haven't read those books in probably a good 15, 20 years. I used to try to read it with my students and they just didn't have the patience. Um, they're not that old either, but I mean, it was like the same age. Anyway, I digress. We're going to look at some of the models from the Blue Woods Barrows, and if I'm thinking of Redwall, you know, you got to start with the mice, right? And this is one of the protectors, of which there were at least four or five different poses, and he is a very nice and diminutive model. Fur there by the ears. I had to zoom this in nice and close. This is at about a four times zoom just to kind of get all the details. But I do like the fact that they are all properly equipped for battle or for adventuring, if that is your purpose. And what I really liked were some of the friends uh, and fellow companion critter folk. And the first one that I had to print, and I really wanted to show off first, but you know, we had to start with the mouse, was our mole friend. And that is Gulliver... Trundleford. I had to write that one down just to keep track of things. Who is... I'm not even sure what this contraption is that he's wearing. It looks like some kind of like a launcher of some sort. I'm still not 100% sure. Because the mechanisms on his back don't look like they really interact with the claws that he's wearing. That little star nose. I thought I had it all figured out, and I guess I didn't. But then there's the, the wind-up screw, too. I don't know. But it's just a fun, silly model. I like his big, poofy sleeves and pants. He is absolutely going to have to get painted quite colorfully. And it's just such a fun thing about this hobby of, you know, painting miniatures and stuff. And having to look up so many, you know, like, real-world animal color schemes and you know, fur patterns and stripes, and like every time I have to paint a dinosaur of some sort, you know, I'm going off and researching on the internet. Our mole friend is a little bit taller than the mouse, and if you're curious. I mean, they are scaled quite proportionately. There's no real kind of cartoony uh, look to them, which I really appreciate. I mean, there's some really good cartoony animal sculptors out there. Um, I've seen plenty of like kind of SD chibi style stuff, but I like the fact that these are kind of more in a true scale sense. And I think that they would work really well with a lot of other manufacturers, but Dragon Trapper's Lodge, I mean, is like no slouch when it comes to just diverse and interesting groups of character models of many sizes and shapes. We have had a ton, and I mean, this is just what I have handy. Uh, there's just been an absolute ton of funky and interesting factions, figures, 
armies released at this point by them. I knew I had one of the other animal figures here. I'm like, I thought I had one of the shark guys handy. So size-wise, I think they're going to fit in pretty nice. They're scaled pretty well. So if you really wanted to have an eclectic mix of Animalia on your table, I mean, absolutely, you can get to it. And I haven't even talked about all of the other companions and kind of more hero-type models that were included. I haven't had a chance to print everything because I'm trying to be good about making sure I'm actually going to get this stuff painted. So, unfortunately, I did not print the giant snail with the traveling merchant on its back or the giant lazy frog informant or the pugilist hares or the spearmaster otter. I mean, so there's a bunch of other character models that were included, but let, let's face it. Oh, you know, I did, I did print the badger. You have to have the badger. Lord Samson. He's got some quite ornate armor there. I'm hoping I can do justice to couple of little supports there I'm going to have to remove still. There's this tail. I guess if you really wanted to just play it off like a bear, it's a bear-like face. I'm not going to get into the classifications and groupings of the various animal life because I know somebody could do it. My own kid almost did it to me when I was talking about, hey, you know, I could probably use this for a bear, but it's a badger, blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah, I know. We're not going to get into that, but our badger friend here is quite stoic and larger than life, as he should be. So that's why I was saying I think the bear might work if you wanted to use him as a stand-in. And, you know, it's not like you can't play around and adjust things. Uh, in addition to the more heroic models, it would not be very uh, Redwall-esque, Brian Jacques-esque if you didn't have some bad guys to go with it. And... Who better to lead the bad guys than Clooney? I mean, Scarn, the rat. Skaven fans, take note. There are some really nice looking rats in this collection. I did not print any of the extra rat hoodlum hooligans, whatever they were called, just because I've got more than enough Skaven painted at this point of various companies, ratlings, rat type skulking guys that uh, I'm really not in any big rush there, but they are available with a variety of weapons. You can see here, just kind of using everybody. Whoa, I probably should glue you on that base, but I haven't yet. <laughs> yeah, he does not want to stay. He's kind of heavy with that cape. Yes, Skarn here may be a little bit large for a rat, but you know what? If you wanted to use him as some kind of a warlord or something for your Skaven, might not be a bad idea or for whatever your skirmish game is of choice, but even better than that were the ferrets. There were ferrets as well, and there were a trio of ferrets. I didn't print them all. I love the extra wide hood. I want to say this was like a bruiser one. Use them as highwaymen, of course, with the little holes for his ears. To clean up the supports a little bit. And I mean, technically they're ferrets. They were labeled as ferrets. But, you know, if you wanted to use them as, you know, weasels or stoats, you could technically. I think, aren't ferrets supposed to be the largest of that family? I feel like they are. These guys are interesting. Usually the keyed section is on the feet, but the, since they have such small feet, they flipped it around. The keyed section is actually on the bases for these guys. So they are about human size, and if you wanted to, I guess, tweak it since they are 3D printed, you could do that to get, you know, whatever sized sneaky guys. Oh, of course we have to have a sneaky one. I always remember there was the jet black weasel that tries to sneak into the abbey in the first book. It's like, <laughs> without fail, every time I would read that to my students, that's when they'd always start perking up. Of course, he falls and dies, but I want to say, didn't the snake get him? There is a snake. Well, there's an undead snake with a rat necromancer, if that's something that you need also included in this set. So... Again, plenty of fun stuff to be had here. And I did mention that I would quickly talk about some of the Chosen of the Kami. This month wasn't really samurai stuff. 
uh, but they were mostly monks and they were elemental monks which was what's really neat is that we've got a bunch of different poses you know, the enlightened monk with the requisite chihuahua hair on it but there were a bunch of different poses for the monks and you'll notice that they have uh, spots for magnets on the bases which I thought was pretty cool because they're besides having the yin yang pattern on all the bases there are all of the different elements available for those bases so you could hypothetically swap all of your monks around and having them switch off to whatever element which is actually kind of a cool idea especially for you know like tabletop rpg stuff if you are having a monk cycle through different elements in a battle or something um, obviously they're not glued or magnetized so they don't want to cooperate at least this one this guy has like a big astral projection version of him as well if you're interested uh, but something fun something different and I'm going to say there were regular monks as well, but who wants regular monks when you can have, you know, elemental Shaolin warrior monks? But even better than that, rats and ferrets, right? So if you haven't had a chance, hit that link down below. Take a look at their stuff. There is a lot of fun to be had there. And as always, there's plenty more where that's coming from. So with that said then, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching. And we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.